So we came up with the idea of, okay, I'll give you this hardship allowance. Lah. So just to cover this period of time where you need to double head. Yeah, but of course, when the person come back, you don't get it. Lah. Mm. So I think that is also something maybe business can consider. You don't have to hire a, a full-time maternity cover. Ma. Yeah, you just top up that 50%, 30% to whoever is keen to volunteer. That person happy, company will happy. Welcome back to another episode of Wise and Shine. I'm your host, Dawn, and I have Reggie here I'm with me. I'm your co-host, Stand In, right? Yes, very happy to be back because I got a lot of things to say. Today's topic <laughs> especially, right? Yes, so, yes, yes. Reggie was very triggered by the topic. And actually, everyone on today's uh, yes. discussion is, uh, we were talking about parental leave. And for those of you who haven't already watched a pretty controversial video... I don't think it's controversial. I just I think it's very flat, okay? So, okay. so, so and that's... Not controversial. Not controversial. <laughs> I think it's... It's very lame. That's why I ask everybody to come in. So, this, okay, today's episode, I pull one. So today's a better one, one is yes, it? Yes, it's okay. better. It's, it's better, better than CNA, version. okay? Yes, yes, yes. <gasps> I didn't name the media outlet. <laughs> don't keep, don't come CNA, after me. It's CNA, improve, okay? <laughs> Diana, sir, you can come on the show. Welcome you. The genesis of today's episode is because I watched that thing and then I'm like, what oh, is so lame? Nobody is really saying the truth, right? Everybody is trying to toe the line, very friendly, very PC, right? And then Diana, sir, try, like, she tried to push, but nobody wants to say anything. So I can tell she worked very hard, you know? And that's why I, I texted one round on all the people that we usually have on the show is that hey you got something to say you got something to say you got something to say come right and that's why we got good friends on the show for our audience that somehow don't know you you want to introduce yourself hi everyone I'm Adrian I think quite regular on the show yeah Yeah, I'm I'm a a better HR professional uh, I'm a father of four and I've been I ran my own business before so I think I've also been on the site of the, the business where mm. you will experience such stuff is inevitable and when I watched the video that you sent to me I have the same thought it feels very flat yeah. I think a lot of things are unsaid yeah. Yeah, yeah. which leaves people actually wondering even more after watching the yeah. video yeah. so I hope I can share some of the perspective on it fair 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 and yes Yes, hi, I'm Anthony. Um, for once, not doing investments content. Yes, so, yes, yes. Oh, Actually, do you know I, I, I told them to embargo you from non-investment content? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he can say that. Every time you see, I'm the best co-host, right? Like, yes. <laughs> Only CEO and above. Then yes, I yes. No, but today is important. Today is right? important, yes, right? Yes. I mean, I'm a father of two. I'm not going to have any more, so it doesn't really affect me. Really? But You're I not going to have any more? No, I'm done. Okay. And, and this leave policy won't help, right? Genuinely. So yeah, good to be on. Yeah, great. That's the basis. Uh. A lot of angry people. <laughs> opinionated, so, opinionated. Today's yes. topic is on is parental leave fair? Or more accurately, is the increase or enhanced parental leave fair? Yeah, 10 weeks, right? 10 weeks. 10 weeks. What's the ground? Can you lay the ground? Like, it's a, the new policy is there's an additional 10 weeks shared parenting leave, right? And the paternity leave double from two weeks to four weeks, right? Because if, at first was two weeks, uh, definitely have. And then extra two weeks is optional, right? Yep. And then now it's four weeks. Uh, en- encouraged. Puss mandatory, but not optional. <laughs> is encouraged. Nah? But now the paternity is four weeks and then there's this new thing which is shared parenting leave and 10 weeks, right? And actually, uh, Diana, she drew it on the map like on the calendar during her live stream right? and then she was like if you look at this that means one of your employees right will be gone for six months it's quite crazy you know like from an operational standpoint right? but so, I mean if they're already gone for four months and then six is there a real difference that's the discussion right so, presuming it is a female who takes that 10 weeks yeah, la, yeah, right yeah, but yeah, if yeah. it's the man who takes it then it's the female disappear for four and the man disappears for two what? yeah okay great you see uh, you see, this is already a better discussion than that <laughs> one right so we, we set the ground right did I miss any other thing from the new uh, parental leave policy? I I think that that was the big change, right? It's it's the 10 additional that is meant to be split somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are here to represent different identities on this front, okay? So from from that, right, what what do you all think? Just a quick rundown, like what do you think of this new leave policy, you know, and and all that? Has it affected, you know, your opinion of things or your choices of things? Well, I'm already past the period where (laughs) I can take any form of such leave. You already got four. You are like Um, the No, the thing is, even even my youngest has already cross that the trigger so all this doesn't apply to me right now yeah, yeah. but having said that I think from a parent's perspective it's always the more the better right it would really help and having it from a shared perspective oh, the more perspective, leave the better, yeah, more leave the not better. the more kids the better <laughs> no, the more. please 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 I, I, I'm not a good example <laughs> okay, don't have okay. four please <laughs> 
Um, so, no, 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 must have four. Government must come on. Yeah, Singapore wants more people to be like, yeah, you yeah, yeah, push yeah. up the declining birth no, rate. No, no, but I, uh, in our previous episode with Adrian, Adrian did say by the third one, fourth one, don't die, carry right? So <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah, that, yeah, I, that. Yeah, I thought that was quite a good, you know, uh, way of looking at it. But yes, yes, continue. Yeah, that, that's true. La. When you have a lot, your bar tend to be very low. Back to this lifting, I think having it on a shared basis is really a good thing because you take into account that in today's context, some father may be a bit more involved rather than just the mother. I've seen many cases. I even know people who are house husband. Yeah, so they do need, they do, well, actually, if they're house husband, they don't need to leave. <laughs> la, but still, it's something that tells us as well as the whole of society, the kind of effort that fathers put in nowadays. It's unlike our time, you know, my, my father is just, oh, okay, give birth, okay, go back to work. Then <laughs> don't see him. Man. You know, th those are our time, but it's very different nowadays. Sorry, Adrian, that is your time. Ah, okay, they might <laughs> talk. My time is what? It's like, okay, okay, la, okay, la, okay, la, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, fair, fair. What, what, what do you think? As I said, the, the, right at the intro, right? I don't think this changes anything. Like, great, you know, I have another month or two off at the beginning. Or my wife has another month or two off at the beginning. But at the end of the day, what's the next 18 years, right? Because that's the obligation. Like, I thought, you know, the bigger part and, and the bigger issue for me is not so much the maternity and paternity leave, but the childcare leave every year after that. Because mm. mm. there's six days now. It's only six days, no matter how many kids you have. You add preschool closure, you add public holiday, or eve of public holiday. That's six gone already. Hand foot mouth disease. Uh, hand foot mouth disease, one week gone. Teacher like, training day. Yeah, exactly, right? You rent energy very strong. <laughs> <laughs> Even without sickness, assuming perfect health, which is impossible, your six is already gone. Then how? And then that's one kid. Why if we have two, then they fall sick at different times. You know? So I think that to me was always the bigger thing, right? It's easy to have a one-off right at the beginning and easy to say, fine, dad should be more involved right at the newborn stage and therefore they should be of more help. But hey, dad's going to be involved year two, year three, all the way up to year 12, right? Mm. Or year 16 or 18. So how does that work? That to me was the first question. Like, yeah, nice to have, but doesn't really change anything. Anytime is only the first year, right? Yeah. If they give you 10 weeks every year, actually, I still wouldn't have a third kid. <laughs> <laughs> but I did think about it. But if they give 10 every year, I'd rather they split in the 10 weeks up into like, you know, several years mm. or they take, they don't give us that 10 weeks and give the childcare leave tag to per kid. Like maybe the next five years, another five more days each year, right? So your, your obligation over the life of five years or 10 years is the same as that 10 weeks, 50 days. But you spread it out because I think that is the part that needs a bit more help, Fair. right? Like your, your first four months, one month, you know, actually in the Asian context, you have a confinement nanny, sometimes you have your grandparents, you have your parents. My first two weeks, I mean, after short of being with my wife in the hospital after a c -sack, I had so many people in the house. I was busy chasing people away, right? More than looking after the baby. And then as time progresses and, you know, the people start leaving, then you know, your wife gets a better <laughs> handle of things, right? And, and that's her mad leave and she recovers physically. So it's mm. nice to be there to help her. But, you know, there's so much help. What about the rest? I think that that is my concern and that's maybe more my struggle. Mm. I yeah. completely agree. It's the standard experience for all uh, new fathers. <laughs> you, you, you need to take a queue number for your turn to happen and the queue number uh, never come on. Yeah, because uh, there's just so I, many I, I people. I go and buy things. I go buy pot, la, buy this, la, buy herb, la, buy that. La. You know, I, I'm an errand boy, right? Which is useful. No, right? and, and I think that's the that's the useful part. But in that in that particular CNA video, I think some of the people were talking about how, you know, dads, you need to be more hands-on with the kids. Correct. And, 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 and that's that, right? more than year one. Yeah, exactly. But the idea is like, what you guys have said based on your live experience right, you got no chance to be hands on with the kids everybody yeah. is around the kid and I think there was a little bit of a swipe at guys saying like I give you more leave right then you're not going to take care of the kid it's like come on right like there are already a lot of people taking care of the kid and there was even a little bit of an energy of like take care of wife is not good enough must take care of kid and wife you know like, but operationally is that the truth operationally is that how it works you know you know what I mean like feminist energy they talk about you must take care of the kid also not just the, the spouse to me always happy wife happy life right of so course, of take course. care of wife first exactly. so then wife my, can take care yeah, of kid my, yeah. then you know everybody kind yeah. of peaceful that's what I'm thinking and I think some of the other parenting professions that talk about it I mean it. the ideal is obviously we take care of everybody right of also course. need to take my parents, her yeah. parents, you know, home kampong la, I take care. It's okay, right? But that's ideal. Whether that can happen, whether that's realistic, I think that's a different discussion. Uh, the wife should also say, oh, maybe I need to take care of the husband, I need to take care of myself, I need to take care of the kids also, right? So, so ideally, everybody takes care of everybody. I think the interesting thing to also question is how much of this additional leave entitlement, right, will actually be taken by the dads? Because hmm. I suspect uh, the wives 
okay, I'm not trying to be feminist or anything here. And I acknowledge that dads of today's era are indeed playing a greater role than ever true? before. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> Anthony is playing quite an active role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for the first few, playing... for the first few. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I start at two. I, I know I got no more to give ready. I'm done. On a personal level, I think they're quite hands-on with the they kids. Yeah, they are. Uh, but yeah, you yeah. see, I actually suspect, and it'll be interesting to see the data after a few years. Mm. You can do our poll below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poll, yeah, poll, yeah. poll, poll, poll okay. below. Between wife and husband, who's going to take it? Is yes, it a yes. mom or dad? So my guess, uh, and what I suspect is that the wife, the mom will actually be taking the extra. 10 day, ten weeks? Not, not all 10 weeks, la, but maybe let's say the dad takes two or four and the remaining six or eight goes to the mom because mm, it's shared. Mm. So, okay, so the mom mm, disappears for six months. So and f- yeah. we, I give reason first. Uh, mm, yeah, that was what I was one perspective ask. is because the government pushes very heavily on breastfeeding. I don't mm. think you all know this. I do. It, it, it's a pain. People mm. who are in the hospital would know and all the mothers will know. Okay, We really get bombarded by the breast is best message so much that it's freaking annoying. Seriously. And I say this. Seriously. Breast is best. Yes. Clearly not a dad. <laughs> right? The two of us are like, yeah. It's true. You get bombarded by that. The hospital bombards you. Okay. And then the lactation consultant will come and mow your boob and push for you and show you. You just have to suck up all that pain. And they will keep telling you, don't feed formula. Breast milk, breast milk, breast milk. And then the government also in recent years cut down. I don't know how many people know this because it's more behind the scenes. They cut down on the advertising and sponsorships for formula milk beyond a certain for the younger so group. So you cannot advertise at all from 0 to 12. Yeah. Phase 1, phase 2, no advertisement. Correct. No but free samples, nothing. Part, so the logo year, cannot even put like below 12 no, months. No, no, no. Like, you cannot advertise. Oh. You cannot run ads. You cannot sponsor people. And I know there was a very big So you change. lost some sponsorship. Eh? That's why you No, so because angry. when my first kid, right, uh. 0 to 6 was the norm. Second kid was 0 to 12. Then I'm like, hey, why change? Ah? Oh. Then I, I got very triggered lah, because I was someone who really tried my best with breast milk. Oh, just low supply, what you want me to do? Yeah. And then like, I cannot work, you know, so hard, what, pump and go to office. Uh, and I know of people who really have to breastfeed all the way. It's really very tough for the mom. So I wouldn't be surprised if this new policy, the moms actually take it because they can breast is bad, breast is bad, feed for six months. <laughs> right, that's what they say, right? Okay, so now yeah, the mom and the kids should be 12 months, right? Cause zero to one. No, they cannot. <laughs> then the businesses will close down. So six months first. <laughs> breast then is the mom say breast is not bad. I gave you, you got six months to go and breast. <laughs> Let's mm. run the data a few years from now and see yeah, if that yeah, actually yeah. happens. Oh my. So from your perspective, right, just to be clear, from the 10 week shared parental leave, if let's say you get eight weeks, you know, and then Nick just gets the extra two weeks, right? What will you be doing in the extra no, I two won't. months? Sorry, I after going through two kids, uh, I'm no like, more. don't <laughs> breastfeed. Oh. Yeah, try your best for like the first, maybe your maternity period is four months, right? Try your best for the first two, three months. If it really sucks your life out of you, stop it. Yeah, like, just take the medication off. and stop. Yeah, right. the kids, you're going to grow up from love milk. It's fine, right? And you're going to get your sanity back. No more living in three hour cycle. For me, it's two hour cycles or more because I latch and bump. Wow, I tell you. I, I read out down all my new mom friends. Seriously, whatever the government tells you, whatever the hospital tells you, screw it. If breastfeeding is too painful, don't bother. If you're blessed with it, go ahead. If can, can lah. Yeah, right? can, because can. If it's breast easy. is best, right? Yes, if it's easy. <laughs> like, 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 can, can, it's, it's scientifically easy. true, of course, right? Of course, yes, yes. But operationally, as a high intensity young working mom, it's a logistical challenge. Yes, yes. I remember yes. every two hours having to wash parts or so. Correct. But also, biologically speaking, right, I think what people don't acknowledge is that really, even though they say the mom's body will naturally produce the milk for the kid, not every mom is designed that way. Seriously. And I say this because I actually suspect the science is not so advanced uh, that we have the data on it. Because my mom was a low supply. And I also low supply. I'm waiting for my sister. Then we see a third data point. <laughs> okay, but I also know of people who very naturally got a lot of milk. Oversupply. No need to do. Yeah, I've oversupply. oversupply. And I really think it's just the genes. But we don't have any science data. So everyone just say breast is fair. You will have enough. Just let, just feed. So the government need to pair you with those <laughs> oversupply. <laughs> la. uh, then can balance off. I love it, yes. <laughs> because otherwise, you also go to waste. Uh. Yeah, no, I actually got donated milk. Yeah, my friend oversupply. Then I undersupply, right? Then she said, I'm giving away a milk. Sure. Then I asked my husband, you okay? Our baby drink other people's milk. Sure, okay. <laughs> I think like this 10 weeks, right? I actually don't think the mom should be taking the extra. Oh. Because that defeats the point, right? They're trying to get dads to be more involved in societal, like the stigma. They, it is harder for dads to take leave versus the mom. Like companies and HR just used to, oh, yeah, 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 the mom, my co. But the dad's less so. So we need that culture and stigma to shift, which is why I think this 10 weeks, right? The dads go and take more, go and take more. Don't is let it, your wife take. Is it true? From a HR perspective, mm. is it still culturally like... Nya, nya, nya. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh-huh. Yeah, for whatever discrimination that has been experienced 
you read about, etc. that happened 10, 20 years ago. Uh, let me remind everybody, the Tauke is still the same, you know? They're still around. <laughs> still the same yeah. gen. They yeah. may say that, okay, now it's 2024, we need to be more modern. But it's still the same set of people. They were the same set of people 20 years ago, discriminate other people. Mm. So maybe they behave a bit differently, but I think it also depends very much on where they come from. Obviously, if you have, your bosses is a single, they never gone through it before, they would see this more negatively. Mm. Yeah, any kind of leave, you know, when I was still doing recruitment many, many years ago, it was so blatant one. Oh, we do not want mothers or single. Uh, do you do you have plan to get married? Do you have plan to... Yeah, last time to, it's like that. Yeah, to have yeah. a kid. It's like that before. Yeah. It's still like that, yeah, yeah. And I if they really want to need pick, they even need pick a man. Oh, you're Singaporean, need to do NS. Uh, so they really, they just choose, oh, let's just choose a Malaysian Singapore P. Uh, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. I wonder so many here. <laughs> the brain drain problem. That's a different episode, huh? Yes, yes. But yes. from a business perspective, objectively, it does make sense. Mm. Because your mm. people will always be in the office. No extra reason for them to be out of the office. Mm. But mm. this was during a time when your measurement of work is based on your time spent in the office. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, a bit different. But I think that educational shift still is still going on. That's why Diana was saying, oh, like that, then I'm more hireable. La. Right? Because she's past the childbearing age like from, from that, <laughs> it's from true, that right? point. She's still in childcare leave. To her, it's like, oh, so now I'm more employable. That's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. It's okay, you can join TFC editor-in-chief. Okay, I I inc- I invite you. Uh. Okay. So from, from that point of view, I understand what, what you are saying, right? Then we talk a little bit from the Tauke standpoint, right? Because I think there was one Tauke on the show and I'm sure to a lot of bosses, it's like, Oh, 10 more weeks, uh, right? Especially when you're a small business. Oh, I mean, even at a law firm, which is not a lot of people within a law firm. You know, I think it's, it's only where there's not a lot of people, that's the problem, yeah, right? Because yeah, how yeah. do you cover? Okay, so to me, it's like, well, four months, six months, is there really a difference? If you're going to cover, you'll cover anyway. Mm. If you're not going to cover, everybody dies anyway, right? Mm. There, there's no real difference, <laughs> right? But if debts go from four weeks to three months, then that becomes a bit more of a problem. I mean, maybe not so much for me because I work on leave anyway, so what's the point? Uh, but you, you can see, like, you know, if you really want to let people take their paternity leave, you have to solve the manpower crunch. Yeah. And I don't know if there's, like, proper ways or, or good ways that, you know, companies can actually plan for these things. And then you are fairly new that your youngest is still quite young. Yeah, two, two, years two and a half. Quite young, when yeah. you had your kid in the newborn year, right, and you tried to take your leave, what kind of responses did you get? Okay, so my first kid, my boss immediately asked, how many weeks is birthday stuff? Two. That time was two. He's like, two ah? Oh, last time I only had three days. But I mean, he's a very, very good guy. Yeah, lots of respect for him, but you know, some some habits die hard lah. Then <laughs> like I, what you say lah. <laughs> yeah. He's still the same tauke wah. Still yeah. the same bunch. Wow. Then <laughs> I, I was working, I think, on the first day. So I remember when my wife was recovering from her GA she was she had CSEC I was in the ward nothing to do respond to emails then she come up then okay don't respond for like two days and then by day four or day five I'm, I'm back online because right? too many people at home nothing to do anyway but so I need to save the rice bowl lah, huh? very mm. important then my second kid wait just to be clear right so you think like if you didn't do the work you, you run the risk of losing the rice bowl no, is it a strong urge or is it just like I think partially it's self-inflicted in the sense that I feel like it's my matter I should be responsible it's my clients I should be responsible at the end of the day people still don't really think that's need paternity leave after a while I have a bit of sympathy for that view at least not, not at the immediate you know newborn stage like maybe mm. later on more, more paternity leave more childcare leave is, is more important yeah so that was my first kid second kid I had my whole two weeks off people really tried not to disturb me until like day 14 then I came back on day 15 and there was a week's worth of work waiting for me then I didn't <laughs> sleep for three days <laughs> right? I know, I know. okay we got partially newborn you know I was working at 3am I myself pick her up right uh... so then, then I put her back down feed her continue working I think it's nice and all that to have leave policies I think the, the crux of the matter really is whether the employer is supportive Mm. and how they actually support to let the leave be a proper leave. So if you had a third kid and now you can qualify for these 10 weeks, right? Yeah. Would you guys take it? No, I'll give it all to my wife. You give all to your I wife? I give all to my wife, right? So Go- you only take two or you take four? So I take the mandatory four, right? But the additional 10 weeks, it, it go- all goes to her. Because I, I think two things. Um, one is physically she needs to recover from um, giving birth, um, especially because she had C-sec. That was very important. And two is... it always help for us to have that period between her end of maternity leave and the kid going to infant care. So I was the one who sent my kids to infant care super early. The plan was always she have at least a month off where kid goes to infant care, she can go exercise, feel a bit more, you know, herself. Wow, so right? nice. Rather than, yeah, and pay for PT some more. Very expensive. 
<laughs> hey, this energy, uh, later Nick watch, uh, then he will. <laughs> it's, like, it's okay, I support, I support. Uh, okay, yeah, yes, but, yes. but I mean, there, there is a, a real physical and mental cost to childbearing. Of course, right? of course. And that is why she needs more time. That's all that must be. This should be mandatory listening for all new dads. Okay? <laughs> and then once they get past the newborn phase, be more involved, right? Because the, the first nine months, a year, biologically, they are very attached to mom, right? But as they start becoming people, you know, then... Being a father figure is also important. La, and, and you also need to be around, I think. Okay, so you would just take the mandatory minimum. Adrian, how many would you take? I think for me, I will also pass it over to my wife. I think it's much more important. Like logistically, you need to breastfeed and all that. She's definitely much better equipped. And at the same time, she would need to recover physically. And Let's say if your wife decides not to breastfeed, then will you still give her the extra weeks? Oh, no, then I take okay, Because okay, okay. the breastfeeding part, I've seen it before. I have to support the logistic, you know, with the cool, cooler bag and all that. Yeah. Especially when traveling. Oh, a very painful <laughs> one. And especially when you travel, uh, you express how uh, it's throw away, you know. You cannot bring through Changi Airport. Uh. Yeah. But you still have to express because that's how you maintain yes. supply. So that is really the trigger point. Mm, yeah. okay. Whether to take it on or to give it to her. When I had my fourth kid, I was working for someone. That was then when I have to be a bit more involved. Or rather, you know, I have to seek permission la, to be absent from the office. I would usually do it on a whim as and when required. Of course, as with all things, you need to have a supportive boss and all that. Mm. So all, all that really matter. But basically to help out wherever I can, no? Sometimes it is to see the PD could be usually it's medical related stuff like jabs yeah. la, this and that yeah la. the jabs oh my gosh yes and everyone have to remember that you know that this is usually in the best case scenario la. if you sway sway you cannot what John this this and that la. Yeah. wow can now you know a lot of time spent to and fro and that is only the kid what if the mother also has issue separate doctor visit so all, all this have to be taken into consideration la. yeah you remind me of me experience with my first kid because he had John this and. And I don't have a driver's license. So I'm very dependent on my husband to drive me. And anyway, the kid's so small, you're so a bit scared to take taxi. taxi because eh, you have to wow. keep going to the hospital for all the additional treatments, right? The husband cannot work. Yeah, but my husband's self-employed, so he doesn't qualify for all this leave. But I can imagine how that, like you said, would help those who need to go and get things done. La. Okay, okay, mm. fair. I mean, I understand what you're saying. But from the Tauke standpoint, right? Like what, what is a supportive boss then from, from that point of view? Because now government come down and say, okay, 10 extra weeks. But these 10 weeks, right, we will pay. Right, so government pay, right? I think in that particular video that you know we were we are referencing, right? There is still this dissonance that okay, so what? It's saying who pay these ten weeks? Yes, okay, but operationally it does create other set of problems. How would that kind of look like from a ground level? Maybe I can describe point of view? Yes. my boss first because, because he, in he some is, ways, yeah, yeah. I share how he treated our male colleague with a uh, newborn. He may also can uh, He uh, is yeah. a new age dog. Okay, you know my boss, right? He's he's our era. The bad thing is he also have a kid yep. around the same age, so he knows. If he treats someone badly, they come out, come back, right? So he's actually a really good example of how he helped to ease our colleagues into parenthood. So they were actually given a lot of time off. For the dads, there were two dads who had very young kids who, who gave a newborn during this period, right? And they were able to take actually quite a bit of time off. I think one took almost an entire month off. Another her Singaporean took, and the kid needed to be in and out of hospital quite often. Yeah, he was just able to go in and out. And then the cover side, because they work in a team, right? So they will just ensure that this person they, and they will make company announcement you know, this person is going out to be a dad soon or you know, this is going to get married soon going to go wedding leave or honeymoon leave that kind of thing right? they'll say like okay the other teams uh, you'll be covering and then they will uh, reassign all the hotspot directions and stuff like that lah. so that even if you're off some the lead or the whatever job operation in the, operationally still gets done because it gets redirected to cover for that Wait, so how big is the there's team? so much to unpack just on that one thing how big is the team or like overall like how many people Probably Globally, the team is about 200 plus. I'm only describing for the and the immediate team that I work with, which would be about maybe say 20 to 30. Yeah, And this was what I saw my CEO do for this yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the idea, right? If you work in a big MNC, they have a very big talent pool to tap on. They can push the jobs around, you know. There, there are many ways around this thing, right? Then you have that one SME Tao getting his name is Ronald, right? <laughs> so he sounded like his team is probably very small. Like I think a, not just the packs. overall size, but the team itself is important. Like if the person is one person in a team of one, then GG lah. Yeah, right? of course, like, of course. Like in the law firms, yeah, yeah. in certain places. So we are places. pushing, we are putting aside the cultural aspect of it. We assume that the company wants to do this already, right? If the company don't do this talk until cow come home also nothing's gonna happen mm. right so we assume that the company is gonna have a positive you know family type of culture where they support 
right? And now we talk about operational, right? So from an operational standpoint, then the question is like, what is considered a good plan, right? Because uh, in, in that video, also a lot of like, oh, you must plan ahead. It's like, you like, 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 what does plan ahead mean? From that planning standpoint, then what is considered a good plan, right? Like, what, what is considered a good transition, especially for smaller entities? Because big entities, they, they got a lot of ways around this thing, right? They, they brought the HSBC guy come in, say they got 26 weeks. Of course, if I run HSBC, I also can have 26 weeks, right? But from a small team, 10-man team, like kind of like my team, right? If today, someone suddenly tell me, hey, boss, i pregnant, you know, I, I, I need to, six months down, this thing will happen, right? That I also lost, eh. I was like, like, how uh, do I hire another person? What is the on-ramp, off-ramp, you know? It, it's, and for all these young entrepreneurs, I think, you know, you start with a young team and by the time you become successful, your team also old already, you know? All your early ta chiang, they all kind of get to that age where it's all childbearing already. But that's so, what some, some companies do, right? So they will hire to cover people on maternity yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. on contract. Yeah. And then they will have the person who is going off train that person yeah, yeah, exactly. in the last few that's months. That's why I wanted to ask uh, Adrian, like, what is a good plan? Uh, rather, rather than tell me just plan. I also know just plan. <laughs> hey, I hope you're enjoying Wise and Shine so far. I'm your host Reggie, aka your chief and in Chikokna. And for us to continue to do this show so that you become a tad bit wiser every week, you gotta like, share, subscribe, Help us be the algorithm. But even more importantly, if you can, comment in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts and also some questions that you would love us to answer. Yep, now back to the show. I think the unfortunate situation in Singapore is a lot of SME are really small. So when that one or two person is not around, uh, it's like 10-20%, uh, sometimes yeah. even a bigger percentage. And also, I've been an SME boss before. We usually don't plan for all this one. We are just trying to survive tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to make sure uh, next week payroll we can make, you know. Yeah. When your head space is all about all this stuff, where I got time to, oh, let me set up a learning academy. <laughs> let me set up an intranet. Just in case someone pregnant, someone go reservist or whatever, they can just go through this SOP, this uh, chapter 1 to chapter 10, and immediately they know how to do 50% of the job. Nobody has this yeah, in place. Yeah, a lot of MNC has. Yeah, yeah, they have dedicated people. They have knowledge management experts. Just setting up their internal Wikipedia. Yeah, so anyone from intern up to CEO can just go in step by step, go through their internal Udemy and learn. So I think small companies just do not have the bandwidth, may not even have the motivation to set something up. They will just, oh, if it happens, then see how, law. Mm, yeah, mm. that is a plan. Ah. <laughs> see how. That is a bad plan. <laughs> that is not a plan. What is a good plan from your point of view, you know, getting up to date with the modern way of running a, a team? So having SOP definitely is very important. Okay, for any fair. business, whether you want to maintain, you want to scale, you need to have the SOP. Yes. Yeah, everyone need to have some Wuling Mi Zi to review even for the most bodo person to come yeah, in. Must be idiot proof. Yeah, must be idiot proof. Oh. You read this, you can at least do 50% of yeah. the job. So that is the first thing that everyone needs to do. Well, the solution then since the SMEs don't have the resources or bandwidth to create the internal wiki or Udemy, then to get that outgoing employee, hey, you're going to go off, right? You create. But she still has to work while she's pregnant, right? She BAU already or, you know? No, so in that six months, the moment you announce, then you help your boss plan, nah, be accountable, right? So yeah, you yeah. create the SOP for the person coming in and you train the person in, let's say, the last one or two months. Yes, I actually had that. So maybe it's an ideal scenario. So the maternity cover came in earlier, mm. not just back to back. So overlap like two weeks. So while she's spending her time guiding, she also spent her time writing up documentation so that she can guide the maternity. And of course, that document it's not just for the maternity cover who will come and go. It is actually useful for everybody. Mm. So that could be one situation where it's a bit reactive, lah, but at least you have something that you could use for a later. Yeah, that would be at least better than no plan or SME yeah, not yeah. doing anything. Just for right? the ignorant boss that got no kids, ah. The small <laughs> more specifically, when does the maternity cover come in? You when know, they when give when, birth, when, when when is a good time? Because he, he said two weeks, right? And give birth, you know, other uh, unless you see set, sometimes it's quite random. No, right? so the like, woman uh, or the not random. Uh. So, so it's got some variants. Uh. Must choose the words very carefully. Yeah, you so, would learn of, you would be able to share the pregnancy in the Asian context in the second trimester. Mm -hmm. So six months, uh, but some employees may hide it for a little. Maybe we can mandate minimum three months heads up to your boss. I, I, okay, I feel like not everything needs to mandate. Uh. <laughs> everything mandate very stress. Uh. And I must point out, uh, having a maternity cover is mm. a best case scenario. Mm. If, if you remember so going back, yeah. yeah. If we go back to the CNA video, remember there was this single lady who is a bit she's more interesting yeah. la. when she gave her answer it also hit me oh yeah seeing it from her perspective she seems to be a bit disgruntled yeah based yeah. on what of course because yeah. she had to cover yeah, right? looking at things from her perspective if I'm her 
I think I will also be very strong. Mm. Wow, you are going and just make baby, have fun. Uh. <laughs> then I kena. I kena, then, then kena my promotion. I need to spend more time, more OT. Yeah, I didn't see the promotion part. I just saw the shared workload part. You know what I mean? Like, like I think everybody gets it, right? Like if you're in a small team and then, you know, it, it's not just maternity. It could be, you know, somebody... Go honeymoon three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Or jump ship to another place, you know, like all sorts of reasons you have to cover. Right, so I think I think people are kind of used to that. It's not a maternity or paternity specific. And the argument thing. is really valid. If you are supposed to just juggle three balls at work, suddenly you need to juggle five balls. Yeah. You just touch and go only one. Yeah. yeah, your first three balls also sometimes you may drop on the yeah. floor. Yeah. So so what happened then? And I think in most instance, company may find it very challenging to also find a maternity cover. Yeah, where you got someone so sweet sweet ah? Do six months one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe my semi retirement job. This date this date leave. You think the person just at home eat peanut waiting for your call, man? <laughs> Come here. That's why those relief teacher that are in the 60s right they well loved by the school but yeah just, just on that so the best case is we have a maternity cover that comes in ahead of pregnancy you know time uh, aggravation time lah, right so that'll be like a month two months before two weeks before EDD two weeks only yeah yeah that is considered I mean, best it's, case it's a eh. cost right to kind of balance yeah that's actually yeah. a really good point yeah. you're hiring two people at yeah, one time yeah you're hiring right? two people at one go the government's not really paying you for that and then the person's temp so they might even be a bit more expensive so two weeks just nice you know hand over a bit get used a bit get used to the company a bit know where everything is then even if like one week earlier a bit pre- premature that's okay right at least okay. you have somebody in already. I think yep. one month feels a bit too long. That's a big cost because you're paying essentially course, for two people course. to sit there. Exactly. And, uh, There's also the after period. You got to hand over. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot mm. just nah. Yeah. <laughs> and then leave the next day. A very smooth handover. Yeah. So even if the government comes in and cover, because the first eight weeks of maternity, the company have to cover, right? And then the next eight weeks, the government will cover it with a cap, right? And then this 10 week extra parental leave, this one government also cover, lah, right? So, but on that basis, uh, then even with that type of cover, a lot of SME targets will think like cannot. Like I still have to kind of be very budget sensitive in, in that sense. I mean, just just want to see. I mean, no matter how you slice it, I think there is no always how you slice it. Yeah, there, yeah, there yeah. is always an additional cost where you're where you don't have manpower. Yeah, fair. Right, because even if you don't hire anybody else, it's just that sixteen weeks you are paying that person eight weeks where you don't have the ability to call on them for work. Right, so so it's more about the allocation of cost and how much additional cost the employer bears more than anything else. I think even so if, if let's say you cannot yeah. find a maternity cover, there are still ways around it. My own situation, right, when I went on leave for my first kid and I took the 16 weeks all at one shot what I did was they couldn't find a maternity cover and I'm in a revenue generating role which means if I'm not there the company has zero revenue so it's very dangerous because the entire ops team depend on my department too and I was at that point that I was the last person standing already so it was really just one person 100% revenue loss uh. yeah, my old company old company okay previous one and what happened was that I uh, couldn't find so I had to draft up all those SOPs and manual right from scratch I designed it I trained the teams and I portioned out my role so I say, okay, this one, these people, I, I handed over to this lady and that lady has like a couple of people under her. I said, you will handle this part now. That's maybe, let's say that's 20% of the work. But the 80%, my GM actually took over. Yeah, so my direct manager came in and took over. Obviously, my GM had to handle even bigger things and bigger fire in the business. So some things, like you say, have to drop, lah, right? Like how to handle so many things and do in depth in all. So obviously, the revenue dropped during that period. But at least like then on his end, he was prioritizing the bigger ones. So, course, so okay, the, I got, let's say 10 things come in. I will only work on those that are like the six digit deals. The rest, I drop. Let them go to competitive. Which may not be a bad thing, right? It actually forces people to streamline their work. Not just mm-hmm. every day meeting, 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 and then at the end of the day, achieve nothing. Right? But, but then at the end of maternity, they go, actually, I don't need you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is what happened to Elon Musk PA. Yeah, the PA went away for a, 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 a long time. And then when she's back, he's like, actually, I don't need a PA. Like. Cheng, cheng, cheng. So that's a different discussion. So then huh? actually, yeah. it's on the employee to prove their worth. Yeah. So Adrian gave a very good example. Uh, plan, company should be looking at hiring a maternity cover, then train and have those SOPs in place. Get the person who's going on parental or maternity leave, write those SOPs and coach that person yeah. or create the document so that if the person doesn't overlap with your period, then they can at least read something like maybe open up the phone line for them to ask questions no? like, oh you, you all cannot overlap but is it okay if they call you then say don't don't keep calling uh, the person breastfeeding uh. <laughs> but call, call if you have urgent question right, breastfeeding otherwise... nothing to do so... <laughs> <laughs> no exactly. not you, not you cannot balance, exactly. cannot balance and then on my side I offered a different perspective which is someone had to cover no? if you cannot hire then the rest of the teammates will just have to play put in more effort and time but let some balls drop so then that 
pushes into the discussion of like, why not, you know, call it family care leave, right? And not parental care leave. Because that's what the the, the single individual she, she was fighting for. And not just her, because mm. they did a poll in that video, okay, where I think 50 over percent of people are supportive of family care leave, you know, where everyone... Whether you got kids, no kids, you are entitled to. And then there's about 30 over percent that say something about mental wellness off, right? Which I think she was quite scooped the other day. Like, like oh, Gen got Z, such thing. Yeah, uh, wow. knew, mental it's wellness day. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you think about it from even from a boss perspective, right? I'd rather a person go for a swim, go and drink coffee, go yoga, then, then just sit there and like, ghosts you know <laughs> and after that they come back they make up for it lah, right so so there must be some level of trust between us right that, that you will make up for it after you like do something else right? there's a so, company in China introduced unhappy leave yeah not happy yeah. no need to come yeah. ah! really really yeah a boss, can we have shows that? you how competitive the landscape is finding good people <laughs> okay from that point of view right then it pushes into the discussion of like why not just family care leave you know don't need to be parental care you again know I mean? from that single's perspective I get it I really get it because she cannot make use of all this leave etc and all it's that what we call no, no, the like, single's like, tax right like, sure, like, that, yeah. the ideal is everybody is fair right that's the ideal but I think if we take a few steps back what's, what's the objective of this to begin with the objective of this is to encourage encourage more Singaporeans to have kids. And if you recall in the video, she also mentioned another thing because Diana sir said about, oh, you know, if not enough kids, then we have to bring in foreigner. Are you okay with it? And her answer is like, mm, uh, not exactly, you know, if foreigner come in, if they do the job that we don't do, okay, but if they come and take our job, they're not good. You cannot have the best of both worlds, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. That's why MOM scoping the S pass, E pass. <laughs> That's why they implement yeah. compass, yeah, yeah, make yeah, it harder. Yeah. So she being disgruntled, or unhappy with maybe her, her colleagues right now having kids incessantly. But I think the painful part is if she has it her way, okay, people stop having kids. Everyone fair, okay? I don't have to take your workload and all that. Who's the one suffering? It is the people 30 years later they're going to suffer, no? Because ultimately, Singapore will be like, how ah? Or oh, import more people, you know, no choice. So you're, I give you 10 weeks, you don't have more baby. I give you 20 weeks, you don't have more baby. What to do? Another way of looking at it is this, right? So let's say we make it fair. Everybody get 10 days of family care leave, right? Take care of childcare, take care of grandparents, whatever. Everybody got more days. And then because, well, everybody's off a bit more, we hire one or two more people. Additional cost, lower your pay. Are you willing to accept that? Like, it's all straight offs, right? You want more time off, you get paid a bit less. Lah. Yeah, of okay, course. Can you accept that? Of course. No, but but we also know that it's not the paradigm between what is paid is also tied to cost of living. This thing needs to be seen in tandem, right? And then is the government going to do price controls, right? Or is it, are we going to like regulate some of the highly so profitable you take more time off to go and drive grab and earn more money to suffer a cost of living? One la. thing affects the next yeah. thing affects the next thing, right? So I get it, right? But from that point of view from the individual, the single, right? That I, I realised that that disgruntledness, right, actually runs quite deep, you know? It's of not course. It's not just... Unfair, life is unfair, but lots of things in life are unfair. No, yeah. no, 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 no. So, so that is a sweeping statement, right? So I don't disagree with that, that point of view, right? That is a reality that a lot of singles experience in Singapore. Lah. But I, I want to go back to what Adrian pointed out in the interview, right, where he said that, oh yeah, but the individual don't get to promote, you know, that, that whole thing because it is a big part of why people grind the corporate grind, right? You want Singaporeans to become professionals and you want them to, you know, move up the corporate ladder and do well, you know, so that you know, the whole country does better, blah, blah, blah. Then more and more of these type of cases come in where where people just have to juggle multiple things. Then they're kaki, you know? Right? I never saw it from that point of view. You, you know what I'm saying? It's I think like, we need yeah. to separate between if you cannot promote because you have to juggle other people's jobs or you just find a way to juggle and still do what it takes to get promoted. It so, may be harder. So you're asking me to text my own personal life on no, this. No, but huh? I think people yes. also right, need... Right, exactly, right? Yeah, and, 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 and that's the truth. You must say it, right? You, you yeah. know no, what I, I mean? something yeah. she's implying as well is maybe the boss isn't giving her due yeah, recognition for double hatting. Mm. Yeah, that could actually be an extra bonus points to a KPI, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. because what's the other scenario? The other scenario is, oh, the boss just hire all single law. It can't be, uh, you just you go to temper and hire your Actually, mom the and question is, did she speak up to the boss? Right, because it's easy to complain, but if you feel, and, and it's valid that the boss should recognize, then if that's not happening, speak up. 
hey boss, I cover your this employee. Why she get this pay, I get lower. Why you never promote me? You she come back, you promote her. I know the work. She needs to speak up, right? And then if really unfair, leave. That's the thing, right? You cannot control the situation. You control your reaction to the situation. Correct. So if you think that this is fundamentally unfair, I hate this life. Quit find a new job. All across Singapore, I hate Singapore. Go Europe. I don't think it's better. Especially for maternity leave and cover, right? So sure. Go find somewhere where it aligns with your ideals and you know, live the life you want. I had a situation where I think a staff, he did raise that, oh, I know I need to cover, I, need, I got my own stuff to do, etc., etc. So we came up with the idea of, okay, I'll give you this hardship allowance. Lah. So just to cover this period of time where you need to double hat. Yeah, but of course, when the person come back, you don't get it. Lah. Mm. So I think that is also something maybe business can consider. You don't have to hire a, a full-time no, maternity, maternity cover. Ma. Yeah, you just top up that 50%, 30% to whoever is keen to volunteer. That person happy, company also happy. Fair, yeah, that's fair. a great plan. I think that's a better plan than just plan. To be fair, we have three plans already. I think all three no, no, could I'm work react, for different businesses. I'm reacting businesses. to the CNA just plan thing. It's, like, it's lame, right? Just, of course, I know it's just plan, not what we thought, right? right? At least we give yeah, three, yeah. right? One, no, two, but I, three. I think that's a good thought because if you are in hiring, you know that hiring is damn difficult, right? There's there's a lot of processes by the time you get to the person and then you're only hiring for six months, right? And, you know, it's, it's crazy, but if you put it out there within the team, you know, you want to make this a little bit extra, you know, then then you you carry the load. Hardship course, allowance. Yeah, hardship allowance. Then you, the you, key, you have to step up and show your worth to get promoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the it's key, a stretch. Tour of duty. Right? Exactly. It's a yeah. tour of duty allowance. I also wanted to point out about like you were saying, why not call it family care leave? Why parental leave? So I'm mulling a lot about that also because aging population, right? And then yeah. more of these people, some of whom will be singles, need to take care of elderly parents as well. How come there isn't any mandated caregiver leave? Yeah, yeah. This one uh, must ask MSF. No, <laughs> so then, then I, I hope I, 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 I MSF can come and talk to us, so okay? So, I think the fact that, ha, this has been brought up many times already, ma, so it's not like the government don't know. Yeah, but yeah. the fact that the government choose to roll this out first and call it parental care leave instead of family, oh, but oh, I yeah, think yeah. it reflects their priorities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, because but, like what you highlighted, right, the priority first is encourage people to have kids and bring up the declining birth rate. Of course, of course. Aging population is also a priority, but it's unfortunately less of a priority than bringing up the birth rate. And that's why they name it like that. Of course, of course. I mean, even while was saying right, I think we did a budget episode I think two years ago and he was talking about I think TFR is a bigger problem for Singapore than climate change yeah. right so, so <laughs> front and, front and centre TFR is a, is a big the problem the number one right? problem yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we bring that TFR t- total fertility rate replacement thing uh, back into the discussion because it's essentially where this you know parental leave kind of developed, right? So when we bring it back, then in the opening Anthony, he said this extra 10 weeks is not going to change, you know, my decision. But, but if let's say I don't have this 10 weeks, okay, so we switch the policy a bit. I don't have this, I don't give you this 10 weeks, but every year I give you more leave. You Child know, care childcare leave. leave. Will that move the needle from a parent's standpoint? Or, or maybe what would move the needle for you to have another kid. Yeah. So what will move the needle for you? Because you blatantly said no more. So so let's say, <laughs> let's say, uh, instead of this 10 weeks, one time, good one, uh, I give you this 10 weeks, uh, but separate over 10 years. So every kid, uh, every mm. kid, every year, you get one more week of parental leave. Okay, every kid, every year, one more week. Wow, not bad. Uh. And from a company standpoint, uh, it may be lighter, you know, because I think someone to cover one week uh, is not the same as yeah. 10 weeks, uh, right? One week, jaga, jaga a bit, uh, I can still pick up a few phone calls. You know, uh, things are kind of move along, right? So so what if we switch that thing? Instead of one time, go one 10 weeks, one week for 10 years. Yeah. You know, will uh, that- still know. <laughs> <laughs> so there are things that will really make me consider having a third kid. It's really how much protection there is for labor, right? So if there's a right to disconnect, so really you have the office hours or maybe like- Which is ongoing discussion, right? right? Yes. And there's ongoing yes. discussion. And then after that, you can really switch off until the next day. Then that's fine. Because I think the difficulty is there's only 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? You want to work hard. You want to look after kids because you need to be active and engaged parent now. Then you need to sleep. You should ideally have some hobbies and be interesting. Where, where's the time going to come from, right? So somebody has to give and it has to go some, like some, a part of it has to be reprioritized. So, you know, for first two, three years of my kids, first kid's life, I didn't have any hobbies. I barely many friends, right? It was just work until 7 p.m., go home, two, three hours, bedtime, work again until 1 a.m., go to sleep. I still again. don't have any hobbies. My kids are six years old. Uh, exactly. Right? She can't stop working, like wedding, the time also at the video. That's a different so story. This is a personal like, you know, you choice. Have three jobs. Yes, I have yes. one job. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right? There's a limit uh, in terms of how much time there is, right? And how much energy you have. So if you can say, fine, there are 
things where you don't need to give the energy, right? And then you spend more energy on your family. Then that's okay. And so long as there's a policy that shifts towards that, that allows for that, I really would consider having a third kid. Okay, mm. okay. But that is a big structural shift, right? Which is not like a one, two week type of thing, right? That's a very big... It's not a, you give me five more days of annual leave a year, I will take, right? Or you give me even 100k more. Right, I will take. Because 100k is not going to pay That's for my kids Korea. forever. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or oh, Adrian, what would it take for you to have a fifth kid? What policies would you want? Don't know, don't know. Fifth kid. Yeah, I, I think childcare leave definitely would be helpful if you have more of it and it's uh, spread out. Like we said earlier on, you know, you have your handful mouth disease and all that. All these things up. But I think financially is also another thing. Yeah. And the bandwidth is something I can assure you no fathers ever thought about. I also lost almost all my friends when I had my first, second, but my third one, no friend already. My speed down, uh, <laughs> all, all name gone already. It's okay, make, make new friends. <laughs> yeah, all your new friends are parents or like your kids' friends' parents. Yeah, right? yeah. That, that's the we'll only talk to you about fathering and sometimes football. Those are the kind of situation that one has to be prepared for. And I think in today's context, there are just so many different distractions, right? Yeah, sometimes while well, you're taking care of the kid, you go to Instagram and see your friend, oh, Nabe, go overseas, them show up. <laughs> Why do you want to have another one? And you have so much fear mongering around by, you know, banks and all that. I remember I saw this ad by a bank telling you that, oh, by don't know which year, which year, your university cost for your kid will be like, don't know how many million dollars. No, I know which bank. I also know which <laughs> bank. That, that bank, <laughs> Why are they not advertising for me? So you have all this pressure, you know, all this pressure left, right, center. Why do you want to make your life so hard? Life in a fast-paced society like ours is already very hard, mm. which is why so many people are escaping, right? Yeah, so I think the cost aspect has to really be covered. I was told, I'm not sure how true. Huh? So I had, a, I had a lecturer, this is probably like 20, 30 years ago. He worked in NOL, Neptune Orient Line. <laughs> and he was telling me they have this policy for every employee, first four kids, huh? the company will sponsor education all the way until university, mm. which is why almost every employee during those era have four kids. So one big Stress is already taken care of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I don't remember wrongly, I was also to Singapore Powers, lah, not SP. It was still Singapore Powers back then. Also has similar policy. Mm. Yeah. So all this has to be taken into consideration. Yeah. And all these are in some ways GLCs, right? They they are all government led. Last time, you know, if you if you become a working professional, still got house for you, right? All these things, right? Not not all don't have all free market. You're gonna oh, even last time <laughs> got a pension, right? Yeah, yeah, I got pension. Yeah, right? your so, HUDC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have all removed, right? Then you still want me to like have, have more kids, right? Because everything, if you remove, you know, you let everything push everything into the open market, for profit mechanism come in and seek, right? So then you know everything becomes more expensive. And then now you still want people to have kids. That's it's why the singles and dings will say they can't even take care of themselves. Why would they go and have a kid? Ma? I I'll add in mind also, I think I actually wanted to have a third kid, but I changed my mind. Because at the period where we were going to okay, can start to plan and try already, right? They took a the working mom then. I just want to <laughs> confirm right you really made a decision yes. because they removed the working mother benefit yes and I'm not the only one really? I know a lot of friends and family members who it's not like, it's not, would it's, be open to another kid but it does make a very big difference you know because like you said all the taxes uh, all the cost is high so when the cost is high what do you do you earn more lah. Mm. but in Singapore context you earn more what happens you tax more so when you lose that tax benefit, it makes it, it's a double whammy. You earn more, you tax more, and then you don't have that much more to go and young another kid. Mm. It's very difficult. So just to be very clear, you're not borrowing that tax remover to tell your family, say, I don't have another kid. No, no, no. <laughs> I really, I genuinely, genuinely wanted to... Because of that 6, 7k a year, is that even a difference? No, they removed the tax. They changed the calculation, right? Yes, of correct. the WMCR. So but how much past, is that in dollars? Okay, it's hard to predict because it also depends on but your say income. You max out. Oh, your income. Okay, I give an example. I was very inspired to have three kids because of our older cousin. She has three kids. But like, okay, I'm not bad. Like, I also follow. And then when she told me because she has three kids, she pays almost no taxes. I'm like, how much you earn? And she told me her earning. Oh, you earn so much and no taxes. And she say, yeah. And it helps because the cost is very high. Then, oh, okay, not bad, not bad. So when I became a mom and then I realized first kid, wow, really the cost so high. Why nobody tell me? Second kid, oh my goodness, really, really very high. So then when you make me think about the third kid, I'm like, okay, if I am I prepared to have this additional cost? If I am, I need to earn more, right? But now because every kid born after, I forgot, was it 2024 or something? Yeah. After that mark, right? Will now be on the new system. And it, which is the old system is a percentage. Yeah. Uh, your wife benefited from that, right? The percentage, your wife hardly pays tax, right? Yep. See? 
Okay. It makes a very big difference okay. because now he's in a position where his wife can go and really max out and earn more mm. to pay for the extra kids Just and not clear, get that, that tax. It's always part of the eighty k cap on exclusions, right? There is a max cap. So on even if let's say it's eighty thousand, twenty percent a year, your tax bracket is twenty percent. That's sixteen k a year. Right, is, is that really the cost of inspiring Not everyone them? Everyone hits the 80% cap. So, this is the top, right? Yeah, this, this is, is like the maxed top out. that you lose, right? 16K a year. If somebody pays you 20K a year, will you say you have a third kid? Because that, that is the trade off, right? If someone gives me 20K a year, yeah. Every year, I don't mind having a third kid. Yeah, so that tax actually, I think it does have implications. I don't know if the government anticipated this, but I know at least for me and a few of my friends, when we talk about it, that's why my article also went viral, right? We put, in the comment it. Section. put in the yeah, comment put in section. The comment. Yes. How much would it cost for you to have a third kid? Put back the percentage of the tax. Make us back to Adrian's wife era. Uh, then maybe we'll have third or fourth. Actually, if you recall in during the National Day rally, PM actually did mention something for parents with three kids and above. But he stopped there. He said, uh, further announcement will happen during budget. For the past almost eight, nine, ten years, I've been listening keenly to all the NDR, but I never hear anything, even budget. There isn't really anything significant for big families. Yeah, which I'm part of. I'm just, I'm just hoping, oh, yo, let me buy a cheaper COE. La, you know, I need to drive so many people. <laughs> never have never have one. Yeah, because I'm in that category. And I think the big family numbers have come down. Between couples, right, I think it's about 10% now have three kids and above. And then three kids. And then 6% has about four kids and above. It used to be like maybe about 20 odd percent. It, it came down. The only thing that stayed consistent was the two kids, about 44%. It is what it is. Okay, okay. I think this was a much better discussion. There's a lot more juice and personal take and we're not trying to be too PC lah, huh? but that does not mean we are definitely correct if you have your point of view that is not aired out here please put in the comment section you know we would love to continuously engage you lah, until the next budget just to be clear I mean a lot of us are, are complaining but that doesn't mean that we regret having kids right? Mm. I think to be very very clear wow so much wholesome ending of course you end on a good note <laughs> but I wish I was given money to have a third kid I mean I wish I was paid for not doing my job so <laughs> <laughs> lots of things to wish for awesome awesome yeah. and that's it for today's episode we'll see you guys the next one. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.